Uh, now I take uh, Akinari. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, Monsieur le Président. Um, I think I sh I I'd like to uh, discuss three things, um, uh, spending one minute for each. One is prospects for global economic growth. Uh, second is inflation, deflation. The third is uh, financial system. Uh, the first uh, growth prospect. Um, I think um, uh, average economists are very gloomy about uh, global economic growth uh, next year. But I'm, I'm perhaps somewhat more optimistic because at the moment there are three main elements which put downward pressures on economic growth of the world. One is, of course, US-China trade disputes. Um, they are not, not only reducing trade um, volume between the US and China, but also putting a damper on business investment uh, here and there. Uh, you know, China is trading partner uh, through an elevated uncertainty over business prospect. But, uh, well, as was agreed between Mr. Trump, uh, well, US and uh, China uh, yesterday or two days ago, I think uh, you know, US or China will uh, strike a deal. I wouldn't call a permanent peace treaty or something. It's just a you know, temporary truce. But uh, I'm pretty sure Mr. Trump uh, understands the, um, uh, this issue's implication for economic growth in the US and uh, then uh, presidential election. So uh, this element will ease, in my view. I might be uh, too optimistic, but uh, this is the first element. Second element is a uh, rapid slowdown in uh, China's economic growth, uh, which is attributable, in my view, to uh, deleveraging hit there. I mean, uh, because of uh, you know, huge debt accumulated there, Chinese authorities are smart enough to curb that trend. And uh, uh, you know, this one too, uh, this is a good thing actually for sustainability of China's economic growth long term, but putting a you know, damper short term. But this again, um, Chinese authorities seems a little bit concerned about, uh, you know, excessive downward pressure. And so in recent months, uh, monetary policy has been eased and also state controls on state-owned enterprises have been eased too. So uh, these two uh, negative elements tend to become uh, weaker a little bit. The third element, I think this is most important for e cyclical developments. You know, manufacturing in the world economy is, is, is in large part influenced by so-called silicon cycle, okay? Uh, production of IT goods and uh, machines are governed by cyclical forces uh, of inventory stocking and destocking. Uh, whose cycle consists, consists typically two years up and two years down. And uh, most uh, recent expansionary phase began in early 2016 and peaked in early 2018. So if the two years rule continues to hold good, then uh, it will be early 2020 or uh, you know, around the turn of the year uh, uh, that the cycle hits the bottom and begins to recover. Uh, so, uh, this is a good element, and uh, if 5G and uh, IoT development accelerates, then the economic bottom will come sooner, and the ensuing recovery will gain momentum. Uh, so, this, so much for economic growth uh, perspective, uh, uh, prospect. Low inflation. I think I did discuss uh, this issue uh, two years ago. Uh, you know. Uh, the painful memories of uh, GFC to rankle in the memory in, in the minds of businessmen and the workers. So, uh, despite uh, you know good economic performance during the past few years, uh, workers are still have some sort of sense of job insecurity, and uh, corporate uh, businessmen are you know feeling some sort of uh, liquidity shortage might break up anytime soon or something like that. Uh, and also, I uh, discussed the uh, you know, t global competition, uh, put a damper on prices and IT, AI revolution. And as I uh, did discuss two years ago, I think these momentums uh, not losing, but uh, 
but slowing down. Um, China's influence over um, global deflation uh, coming to an end, in my view, uh, because of high wage increases in China and also, uh, you know, U.S.-China uh, disputes perhaps uh, uh, will limit the uh, Chinese influence on prices in, in the U.S. and elsewhere. Okay, and IT revolution too. Well, IT revolution sort of thing is, uh, depends on regulation. Um, one, one footnote to this is, um, uh, you know, inflation historically flared up when infl inflation psych psych psychology picked up. And uh, it's very difficult to analyze psychology of people. But uh, in this regard, I think 2020 presidential ele election may change the whole dynamics. Um, if the election ends with, with a progressive president, you know, we are all familiar with how you know, radically uh, US politics changed in the past from Jimmy Carter to Reagan and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, if uh, 2020 U.S. presidential election uh, proves to be the same way, then um, uh, the new president will formulate, you know, left-wing uh, policies, including uh, universal health insurance coverage, which I think is a good thing for, for American people. but. Uh, uh, it may change psychology of American people. Uh, to be more specific, uh, you know, uh, psyche may become more inflation prone. Um, like an episode in the mid 1960s when the Johnson administration advocated guns and butter uh, policy, introducing Medicare and Medicaid in 1965 which invited a spike in prices in medical products, actually, and uh, triggering uh, psych inflation psychology then. Uh, so, so much for, um, for inflation. Financial system. Uh, this, is, this is the greatest concern of mine. Uh, to be specific, uh, huge debt has been accumulated, accumulated in the global market carrying negative interest rates. Um, Japanese JGBs, European debts, um, not, you know, not just short-term paper, long-term government bonds and mid-term corporate, corporate bonds. Uh, negative interest rates are counterintuitive to me, although macroeconomists attribute, attribute them to deflationary expectations. Are they serious? Uh, I know no survey that supports the negative inflation uh, expectations over 10 years or longer. Um, in addition, you have to bear in mind that holding a fixed income asset carries risks of uh, not only inflation, deflation, um, uh, but also uh, many others, like uh, price volatility unrelated, to, uh, un unrelated with the inflation. Look, debtors, must, you know, debtors may default, so uh, you know, liquidity premiums should be paid there, and also holders may die before maturity. So negative, negative, negative interest rates or negative yields really defy these risks in my view. Uh, I think uh, investors simply hold uh, uh, long-term debts carrying negative interest rates for arbitrage gain. You know, uh, they hope to earn long, long before maturity, uh, wishing that the, you know, they could escape scot-free from uh, possible spikes in interest rates. Uh, such decision making based on uh, you know Keynes beauty con context beauty contest uh, creates a bubble if it bursts then a number of number of institutional investors will go under okay and they may entail a systemic run on asset management industry uh, because you know once investors run on bond sales some asset managers may f 
we will face a shortage of liquidity in bond markets, which makes them difficult to execute the sell orders, okay, yeah. resulting into cash, cash shortage. So, you know, and remember, some of, or more than a few uh, asset management companies hold assets under management over trillions, trillions of dollars. It's a huge problem. Now, viewed from a different angle, actually, I, I had discussed this uh, two years ago, too. I think... Kinori, uh, can, yeah. can I uh, ask yes. you, okay. uh, am I right or wrong when I say, one, on global growth, you're relatively optimistic, a little bit more optimistic yes, than yes, the mainstream. Indeed. indeed. Second, on getting out of the very, very low inflation regime, you are reasonably optimistic too. Of course, the bet is that the new uh, present in yep. the US will change a little bit, uh, the, turn the table, if I may. But all taken into account, you see the situation different from the very, very low uh, inflation that we have today, which is, of course, driving the central banks to be incredibly accommodating. Well, this uh, is it's what, what I understand from the yeah, second yeah. message. Well, yeah, this is what I... And paradoxically, on the third okay. message, you're very pessimistic, well, this is, this <laughs> as is, a number of us. Well, and you see the, a, this, a dramatic is, crisis looming. Well, this is, well, this is what I'm getting at, actually. Yeah. You know, Japanese low interest rates, negative interest rates, recently, who are the major investors? They are dollar-based investors, okay? Particularly American institutional investors buying JGBs at negative interest rates. Why? because of uh, a wide spread between LIBO and OIS, uh, you know, or, or SOFA, wh whichever you call. You know, dollar liquidity shortage in the market. Why is that? Because major banks are reluctant to do market making activities because they really fear that uh, doing uh, you know, arbitrage on the LIBO and OIS, will, well, they have to expand their balance sheets, which requires huge capital, huge liquidity. Uh, as I said two years ago, Basel III and Dodd-Frank require too much of this kind of thing. Therefore, LIBOR spread is wide there. So that from the viewpoint of American investors, on a swap basis, buying JGBs will, 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 will give them profits over US Treasury holdings. So that's why, that's, that's a part of the reason that American banks, I don't know, American investors buying JGBs at deep negative interest rates. I take your point, like, you know, it's very, very interesting, oh. the element of speculation that you have on your market. Uh, we have a lot of American citizens here. <laughs> we would like very much to have their own sentiment on what's going on on the JGB market. So very, very stimulating, but could you conclude now? And yes, yes, please. So, so this kind of distorted, uh, uh, regulations. On one hand, tight regulations on banks and much less regulations on shadow banks, in particular asset management company, created uh, or, you know, make imbalances already there even worse. And uh, because of short-sighted uh, uh, speculations are so widespread, it would unwind someday and possibly creating a fiasco in the system. So that's, that's my major concern. It's yeah, very important. What you said is very important. I'm afraid we will find other pockets in the world, pockets of finance, pockets of markets, where we have also speculative abnormal behavior and bubbles. Uh, but yours, of course, is gigantic and very impressive. Can I turn to, I'm sorry. But behind this, of course, you know, too much emphasis is given by the central bank to anti-deflation policy, of course. The, the central bank are uh, the only game in town now in many, many countries, including, of course, Japan. It's very abnormal, very abnormal situation. And we will discuss, but I see a connection between Jeff's remarks and your, your own remark.